Hi friends, Mindy here. I have a process video for you today showing how I'm going to be working through pleasing in his site from By the Well for God. This is the newest kit. It is currently on pre-sale right now. Um, I'm going to be working through in my interleaved Bible this time, actually. I'm really excited. I've had that Bible a while and have only been able to do a couple entries in it. So, um, I, but I also wanted to create a journal. And so I felt like using these scripture cards, which are also available for this kit release, um, or if this is going to be the best solution for, for me. Now, these, um, they come with a couple of binder rings here in this canvas bag. And, um, these these cards are beautiful just like they are you would, don't need to do what i'm about to do to this because they're they're really just perfect the way that they are i just wanted to create a cover because i'm going to be using this more like um i'm going to be almost creating a junk journal out of these scripture cards so um, the first thing that i'm going to do is cut my chipboard here for my covers now the cards themselves are um four by four square and so i'm cutting my chipboard covers to be four and a quarter. I want a little bit of an overhang just to kind of protect the pages on the inside. And also if I have anything that's gonna stick out the top or the sides, I mean, I'm sure I will, um, it won't be quite so obvious. So I am cutting down two pieces of this box to be the size of four and a quarter by four and a quarter. And now I'm pulling out this fabric. This is also, um, from the shop it coordinates with the kit they did it in packs of three this time so there was um, this beautiful floral these stripes and then a little like eyeglass pattern and really quickly I just want to insert here I'm so sorry about the lighting in this video I, I know it keeps getting like light and dark I, and I record on my phone I always have and I have no idea why it's doing this so if you know um, I'm gonna try and research and figure out what what's going on with my phone but if you know you know, help a girl out and leave it in the comments. I would appreciate it. So, um, <clears throat> excuse me. What you see me doing here on screen is just cutting down this fabric. So the fabric pieces are 10 by 12. And so I cut it down first down the middle so that I had um, a six inch piece and then I cut it down. So my pieces are basically five by six. Um, and that's just gonna be able to wrap around my cover and I am using heat and bond to do this so I'm just trimming down the little section that I'm going to need here now ordinarily with this heat and bond you would cut it smaller than the piece of fabric so that you don't have glue going everywhere but I need every inch of this fabric so that I can cover my cover so um, I'm actually cutting mine purposefully bigger but it, you'll see I'm working on a piece of cardboard here and that's just so that the glue will adhere down to um, to that instead of just getting everywhere just and making a gummy mess so it only takes a couple seconds you just kind of go slowly just make sure when you're using an iron um, that you do not have your steam on it needs to be a dry iron this happens to be a little craft iron but a regular iron works just as well um, this is just easier for little smaller sections and I um, just have it in my craft area so anyway um, you can see here where it's kind of sticking to it and at this point it's kind of hot but um, I'm just going to set that off to the side to cool and then I did the second piece and now I'm pulling this up off of my um, my cardboard here and you can see it's it maintains it it's really flexible it's going to cover my cardboard really well the only thing I need to do here is trim off all of this excess glue because when I go to add this I don't want all of that getting onto my little iron because that will create a huge mess so um, you can see also which side you glue this down to it matters because that blue would show through this fabric but um, on the inside it doesn't matter because I'm going to be covering the inside with paper at this point I was going to wrap it just like it was but I just um, I felt like it would be easier if it was square so I'm just kind of trimming this down a little bit and I will save all of these little pieces that I have pulled off um, I can still use them I can use them in the journal I can iron them to something else I can so that will not go to waste I will definitely use that because um, this fabric is beautiful so I'm, one of the things just to help myself out a little bit here, I'm just going to heat this just for a second right in the middle so that while I'm cutting off these corners, I'm just making a little like V shape around the corners. Um, it just holds everything in place. And then I'm going to start with wrapping this. You can see I'm just starting with the corner and then kind of using the iron to help wrap it around. Um, if you had like a little bit longer section of fabric, you wouldn't, it wouldn't be quite so difficult, but 
it's really not difficult at all. It just um, takes a couple seconds and you just keep the iron kind of moving and, um, and it adheres down really well. And then um, I will say though that whenever you're wrapping fabric or paper or anything really, um, if you start at the top, then you want to make sure you go to the opposite side. So you go from top to bottom and left to right. It doesn't matter if, which order you do that in. You just want to always go from from the opposite, if that makes sense. So next, I wanted to add this yellow striped. I, I really love stripes and flowers together. It's been a thing for me. I just really like that look. So I'm using both of these um, fabrics together. And I, I just took my scissors and made a little snip and kind of um, frayed one of the edges. I just tore it. Um, and at that point, at this point, my intention was to have kind of a frayed, distressed kind of look to these pieces. Um, so you can see I figured out about how much I needed. And then I am going through that same process, just adding all of the heat and bond to the back. And then um, I'm going to go through the same process. You have to peel the little backer off and lining this up hopefully you know I, th I thought I was lining it up straight so um, what you'll see here I, I did I guess that front section um, and then here I need to trim this off and this was just a little bit awkward um, just getting the angle right but this just really helps you get really good corners if you just take a little bit of that excess um, fabric out of the corner by making that little V cut so um, again I'm just heating that and gluing it down and then um, again I did top and then bottom and then now I'm doing the side and that just helps the corner look really nice and mitered in a nice place and then here's where I realized I somehow got it crooked and that was not going to be okay for me but I have this fabric trim that I got at Hobby Lobby and so I'm just going to use that to kind of mask the fact that my um, my thing is off just a little bit and I went ahead and decided uh, to go ahead and wrap it around to the inside even though it's going to create a little bump on the inside cover I just felt like that was going to do better I was afraid that it would get really frayed if I just tried to cut it like exactly so I wrapped both covers and then I glued that uh, trim down with some Fabri-Tac glue and now I'm cutting the inside papers and I'm cutting these at like four and an eighth because I want them just a little bit smaller than my covers and I am completely covering them with um, score tape well this is the scrapbook.com version of score tape it works just as well and I'm using my bone folder here to burnish this adhesive down just making sure that's really adhered to the paper and then I am pulling the release paper and you'll see I'm kind of folding it back a little bit without pulling it all the way off what that does is it gives me kind of little handles that I can use to position my paper where I want it because you know with score tape once it's down it's down it's really sticky tape and so um, this just kind of gives you a little bit of time to play and get it positioned right and then you just slide the papers right out and now I'm just going to go through with my bone folder especially up around where that ribbon is wrapped around um, because it's kind of thick I just want to make sure everything is really good and and heared so I'm going to do that too both sections for the front and the back and this is basically what my cover is going to look like with the little cards inside so I want to um, cut or not cut and um, punch the holes in here for my binder rings and so what I'm doing is creating a little template to do that so I just took one of the scraps of that chipboard and I cut it to exactly four inches because that's how big the cards are and I'm going to kind of um, use my ruler here and try and get this into a good place uh, I had to fiddle around with this actually a little bit so I cut a lot of that out but you can see I just went ahead and punched the holes there and I wanted to make sure that I wasn't cutting off you know any of the words so where I had my holes was kind of important so um, I finally got my template where I needed to and off camera I punched all of the holes it actually didn't take that long because with this crocodile you can actually do pretty thick stuff at, so I was able to do several at a time and now for the cover I'm taking one of the cards this is actually the cover card it's, it's really beautiful but um, and I just am kind of lining it up where I want it so that it's um, not right at the edge and then uh, it just doing the same thing I just went through and you can see the crocodile punches right through all of this no problem so um, and then I realized that 
I used a 3 16 hole, which is what I needed, but then I realized I only had a few eyelets in this size, and so I wanted to add these reinforcements just to, for one, to protect the fabric from fraying, but also um, because like I said, I'm gonna be flipping through this journal quite a bit. I want it just to add the protection there, but I only had these white square ones, so um, that's what I went with, and um, I'm just using that crocodile to set these eyelets up there and I'm trying to keep them as straight as possible um, and then I'm going to put these binder rings now the binder rings that come with this set are this kind of tarnished brass um, finish and you'll see in my pictures at the end I actually switched these out for some white ones that I just happen to have at my house um, so I'm just going to add all of the cards on here um, from I'm just going from back to front and then um, but this will allow me to be able to use this as as a junk journal almost or um, any kind of journal really so what I will do is as I'm working through the um, the devotional this month I plan to add extra notes and a lot of the scriptures from the devotional are in these cards but this will allow me to add notes and um, other things I can just a punch a hole, open up the binder ring and stick it in. And so it just offers a lot of flexibility this way. And then I can also work in my interleaved Bible. This kit is such a beautiful kit that I really want to have it um, in my Bible. And um, I was really torn kind of how to do it. So if you liked this video, I would appreciate it if you gave it a thumbs up. That helps other people find my channel. And subscribe if you haven't already. Till next time, bye-bye.